Hey, this was going to be a part of the introduction video, but there is quite a lot of information to take in, so I thought it would be best to make it a video of its own. Although it's not all going to be theory, by the end of this video you'll have your first LED up and running using the GPIO pins with some simple Python code. The first thing you need to nail down before beginning these tutorials is being able to match your Pi's GPIO header with the appropriate pin layout table. Here we can see the GPIO layout for the first and second revisions of the Pi. The only difference we have here is the labeling in the two I2C pins, but that is the only difference between the two headers. Here we can map out the layout of the pins by positioning our Pi so that the GPIO header is in the top right hand corner. Once you have this in place, you can easily map the pins by remembering that the left column always counts up in odd numbers and the right column always counts up in even numbers. Unlike the previous two revisions, the B plus model has 40 pins instead of the usual 26. You can quickly identify the pins by remembering that the first 26 of them are the exact same as the 26 pins on the revision 2 model. The extra pins are just a bonus that can be used for projects that will require additional GPIO ports. In the tutorials to come, you will notice that I am using the B plus model. Just to make sure everyone can follow along, I will limit to using only the first 26 pins and demonstrate the setups with the revision 2 header table. Here we will focus on three main types of pins, or at least for our first few projects anyway. They are the power connections marked as red, ground labelled GND in the table and marked as black, and the GPIO ports themselves which are marked as yellow. The power ports do what they say on the tin, they just supply power. You will notice the pins 1 and 17 output 3.3 volts and pins 2 and 4 output 5 volts. The main thing to note about these power pins is that they are always on whilst the power is turned on, so you need to take care in not touching these pins and especially extra care in never connecting them together. The GND ports are basically the ground connection, and if you don't already know, the current always tries to flow towards the ground with the path with the least resistance. This will come in handy later on when we try and read some input from a push button. The GPIO pins are the main pins we will be using for our LEDs and buttons. Any GPIO port marked as yellow can be in one or two states, on or off, which we'll learn how to do later on in this video. One final thing to note about these pins is that any one of them can be used as an input or output, which we will also talk about later on. Most of the pins in the GPIO header go directly to the CPU, so it is essential to take care when connecting your header to the breadboard. As a safety tip, and what I tend to do, is make sure the Pi is shut down fully, then disconnect the power cord. Set up my circuit, double and triple check everything is set up correctly and no short circuits are present, then power it back on. If you are a beginner to this, I strongly recommend you follow these steps, as short circuiting two of these pins could permanently damage your Pi. So just like starting out with any programming language, there is often a hollow world example. To start out with the GPIO pins, I guess we should do something similar and say hello to our first LED. For this setup you will need the following. Your breadboard, one resistor, in which case I will be using a 220 ohm resistor, one LED with the colour of your choosing, and two header cables each with a male and female connector. Now that we have our components, we want to first connect our resistor to our breadboard like so. Notice that it is bridging the gap in the breadboard, thus connecting the two horizontal rows together. Next we plug our LED in like so, with the longest leg closest to the resistor and the shortest in the furthest right column of our breadboard. With our components in place, it is time to connect our circuit to the GPIO pins. Following our safety advice, make sure the Pi is shut down and disconnected from the power source. You can use any GPIO pin as long as it's marked in yellow, 
but for this example we're going to use GPIO 18 which is the pin numbered 12. So let's plug the female connector of our header cable into pin 12 and the male connector into the row of the resistor. And we need to plug our final header cable into the ground connection on the board. So go ahead and plug the female connector into the pin 6 and the male connector into the rightmost column of the breadboard. And that is our circuit complete. You can go ahead and turn your Pi back on after making sure everything is connected correctly. Okay, so now that we've got our circuit set up, it's time to write the Python script that will make our LED flash about 10 times. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Raspberry Pi's home directory and make a folder called Let's Pi, or whatever you want to call it really. If you don't know how to get to your home folder, link to four videos I've already created on how to do this. So once you have your folder created, just drag it into Visual Studio Code to open that folder. And this is the script that we will actually get onto, but I'm going to go through this line by line. So in your new folder, create a new file and call it hello LED. And then with the extension .py. And I've connected via SSH to my Pi and I mean the home directory. So if I list the contents, this is going to be the folder that we just created. So if we go into that directory and list again, we can see that file we just created in Visual Studio Code. If we wanted to execute this, we just simply do Python and the name of the file, hit enter, and obviously it's gonna do nothing because it's an empty file. So now that we have the file created, the first thing we want to do is import all the modules that we're going to need. The first thing we want to do is import the GPIO module. And we can do this simply by doing import rp lowercase i dot gpio. And the as gpio part of this basically lets us to refer all the functions in this module by simply typing gpio in the beginning but we're not going to get that yet. We're going to import our time module because we need to sleep for one second between each flash. The next thing you want to do after importing the modules is tell the Raspberry Pi what mode we're going to be using. There's two modes that come with the GPIO header and that is board and BCM. BCM mode refers to the pins with their actual name in the table whereas board mode just refers to the pin number. So for example, in our circuit, we have the BCM pin 18, but the pin number itself is just 12. So here we are going to use the BCM mode. So again, we're just referring to the GPIO module. So this is a function in the GPIO module and this is a constant in the GPIO module. So that's set up our Pi to be in BCM mode. Next thing we want to do is tell which GPIO pins we're going to be using and whether they're going to be an input or an output. So to do this, we just do GPIO.setup, the pin number. Again, we're in BCM mode, so this is 18. If you had chosen board mode, this would be pin 12. But if you want to follow along, call it 18 and BCM mode. Next thing you want to do is tell it if it's input or output. So this is simply gpio.out. So now if this gpio pin gets a signal of 1, the LED will light up, or if it gets a signal of 0, it's going to basically cut the connection and the LED will stop lighting up. So we want the LED to flash 10 times. So to do this, we need a for loop. So we can do for i in range and then 10. Then your little colon at the end to determine the indent. So here we're gonna loop 10 times. And if we were to print i, you'll see that go from zero to one to two to three, etc., until it reaches 10 and it will break out of the loop. So we're not going to do that, we're simply going to use our time module to sleep 
for one second. And once it's finished sleeping for one second, we're going to turn the LED on. So to do this, we just do gpio.output pin number, and then a second argument to be one. This can either be true, one, or gpio.high. They all mean the same thing, and they'd all do the same thing. Then we want to sleep again for one second, and then turn it back off. And again, this could either be false, zero or gpio.low and again they all mean the same thing. And that is basically all our script set up and we're ready to execute so just hit save, go back to our SSH connected terminal, run that script again and you can see here the LED lighting up. And it will do this 10 times before the script finishes executing and then turn itself off.